Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I deal with all things pastel related. Although sometimes, like today, I talk about topics that would be relevant to anyone working as a portrait commissioned artist. So today I'm going to talk about one of the great difficulties of the portrait artist and that's working from poor photo reference. And the worst kind of photo reference to work from, I find, is flash photography, something that's been lit by the flash. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how you deal with some of those problems and I'm going to use this piece that I've just finished working on to show you some of the problems I had and how I overcame them and give you some tips for things to do with your flash photography reference photos. So I hope you enjoy this and find it helpful. If you like my videos, please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube so that you'll get all my future content. And also consider checking me out over on Patreon where I share all of my pastel techniques and a lot more. So enjoy the video. So let's have a look at the finished painting a bit more closely along with the photo reference. So the first thing that you can notice with the flash photography is the flatness of the light on the main subjects. So the flash tends to overlight the things that are closest to it. And then another problem is it underlights the whole background so the flash really focuses on what's closest. So both of those are quite problematic. Let's start with the background. I can see that this room has cream walls, so it's probably a lot brighter than this in person. So I try to imagine what it would look like if I lightened it all. And that's where Photoshop comes in for me. So this is my finished uh, Photoshop layout, where I've done a bit of work to the background uh, you can see how I got from this then to my finished painting. It's sort of inspired by that, but this stage definitely helps me to visualize what I'm going to do in the painting. I'm going to show you very quickly how I got to this stage with the original photo reference. So here's the photo reference. I actually cropped the photo that I was sent to square shape. And I try to make the boy and the dog much bigger in the composition so that our focus is really on them. But I decided with the background that I would like to try and lighten it. So I don't want to lighten the boy and the dog anymore. So very quickly, I take the lasso tool. If you look to the top of the screen, I've got a bit of feathering added to this. 15 pixels of feathering and that just softens my outline here as I want to do this quite roughly and quickly. I take a little bit more time with it when I'm doing it, but it doesn't have to be neat. So with them both selected, I'm going to uh, make a copy, paste it in on top. So when I look in my layers here, I've got an extra copy of that. So I can work on the photo behind. So I just select that layer for the photograph behind. And then I can start to lighten that image. So let's uh, look at curves first of all. I just want to bring the overall brightness of it up first of all. So that already starts to bring I'm using the, the cream walls as a sort of marker, trying to bring them up in brightness. And I really want to knock the background uh, quite far back in the composition. So I want to introduce some blur as well and really exaggerate uh, the background a little bit. But I, I did toy with the idea of uh, putting a plain background behind the pair of them. But sometimes in older photos like this, I feel that the surroundings are as much a part of the story. So I really wanted to try and find a way I could incorporate the background. So I've lightened it a little bit. Now I want to play around with how much I might blur that chair in the background. Uh, there are certain things that I'll exclude completely. I'm just gonna continue the cream wall right across behind the chair. I planned to do that 
just to continue this area cream. But I can then go into the filters, into blur, Gaussian blur. And I can start to play around with how much I might blur that chair in the background. And actually just before doing that, I want to, when I'm making the selection for just the chair, I want to increase the amount of feathering on the edges so that I can start to gradiate a bit of the uh, blur down through the piece. You'll see what I mean as I do that. Uh, this stage definitely helps me visualize a little better what I'm going to do when I get to the painting stage, especially when I'm playing around with uh, something like this. I know that I'm straying away from photorealism and it's okay to do that sometimes, but you have to be careful when you do that because it can turn out really odd. So I'm trying to use uh, some tricks of focal blur. I want the uh, fireplace to appear a little closer to the boy. He sat right next to that. So I can afford to send the chair further back in the distance, but keep the fireplace a little bit closer. And that's pretty much what I do. I go around the picture uh, gradually bringing us into focus for the foreground and uh, blur different parts of it to different degrees. So that's one way to make the best of poor photo reference. I often incorporate the backgrounds but blur them a lot and that's how I do that by using Photoshop to get me some kind of layout to visualize the finished painting. So that's the background. Um, let's chat a little bit about the figures themselves. Uh, they're very overexposed. The lighting is coming from directly in front of them, which is always problematic. Uh, the trick of painting realistically is to pay attention to the direction of the light. So one thing I did to help a little bit was enhance these shadows around the base of them. Just darkened in here a little more than it is in the photo reference. It just helps ground them a little bit better. You can see that the flash lighting really uh, lights right in underneath them, which just isn't very natural. But on the whole, I actually did accept the flash lighting on the two of them. And I changed the flash lighting uh, for the background. But I did uh, keep most of the lighting on the two of them. One thing that I did for the dog especially was try to bring out a little more detail in the chest. So this wonderful lasso tool, I use it a lot. And it's just mainly the white areas where the camera flash overexposes the white and the camera doesn't pick up any detail in those areas. So I select the white area just very roughly to show you here. Then even with something as simple as curves, which I used earlier, I can start to darken that area, which isn't great, but it at least allows me to see the structure bones in the dog. It allows me to see that much. And I can work a little bit more with color to just hint at those shapes a bit more. It definitely gives the dog a bit more structure and shape. And with the boy's face, uh, it really was problematic because uh, there's no direction of light. The light's all coming from straight ahead. So I tried to not change that too much. I didn't want to risk losing his likeness. So I really tried to paint it as I saw it and enhance the colors a little bit more, bring in some more warmth to the flesh tones. But apart from that, I really stuck with the lighting that I could see. Uh, the main thing that I made, uh, that I decided to exclude from this area is this dark shadow that you can see running down the side of his head. Now it posed a problem because when you look at him from a distance, he's got a much broader head than, uh, than in reality, I think. Because if you look really closely, this is actually the side of his head here, down the side of his face. So I decided to exclude that really dark shadow and the really dark shadow in behind this ear. I felt that they were uh, confusing the overall shape of his face and probably not uh, very realistic. So 
it's okay to uh, sacrifice realism sometimes. I know that the painting didn't turn out 100% realistic, but I felt that telling the story was far more important. So lastly, for their eyes, eyes are often a big problem when you're working from flash photography. But in this case, it really wasn't too bad. Uh, the reflections that are in the eyes are quite good. They're quite small. And even the reflection on his glasses, I thought were quite helpful because I really can't see the shape of his eyes too clearly. So those reflections uh, sort of helped me uh, get his likeness in that area. But let's have another look at an example of where I had to change the eyes. So this beautiful dog reference proves that sometimes flash photography can be really beautiful. You can use the flash to make something really dramatic. In this case, the clients decided to go for the head portrait. And the only real problem that I had with the photo uh, was the flash reflection in the eyes. So let's have a closer look at that. So that's really the only problematic area because the drama of the lighting on the fur is really nice. It fits really well with the drama in those clouds behind her. But I did need to fix what's going on with the eye here. So what you'll often find is that the pupil, the darkest part of the eye, will reflect the flash lighting. So you can see in my portrait, I've just made that area black. And that's a very quick, simple fix. If you can see the outline, which you often can, of the pupil, then just by darkening that area, it takes away some of the flash. And also with this pupil, I decided to make it a little bit bigger because again, the flash, although it's not really reflecting here, it's affecting the size of the pupil because it will often shrink uh, with a bright light. So that's a quick, simple fix for eyes in particular with flash photography. The most important thing with tricky photo reference is to avail of photo editing software. Work to improve the photo that you're given to give you the best chance of creating a great painting. So that's it. If you can avoid using flash photography reference photos, do. But if you decide for some crazy reason that you want to have a go at it, I hope that some of these tips will prove helpful. Until next time, happy pastling.